I'm going to talk a little bit about how we applied the concept then, some of the things that Bob was talking about to our local RC and Ds. Um, so this is our story, and this is our group. We have um, six RC and Ds in Wisconsin right now that are active. When we started the process, there were <coughs> five. There were four of us. So it was Glacier Land, RC and D, Lumberjack, Golden Sands, and South Forest Badger. Those were the people at the table when we started the process. Since then, River Country has come in and um, and joined, so we're real happy to have uh, the other one. We had two RCMEs that uh, dissolved in Wisconsin as a result of the funding cuts. So um, we're still active, we're still working together, but you know, when we meet quarterly as an association, we talk about this concept every once in a while, and I've been there for four years, and I bet every other meeting you know, you'd hear this, we have to get our name out there. We have to get our name out there. So what does that mean eventually for those of us that are here? <coughs> Somebody's going to a fair. That's kind of what it meant for us. Somebody's going to pack up their brochures and pack up the trifold and head to a fair. And I think what we wanted to do was delve a little bit more into targeting that audience, what Bob talked about, those, um, you know, not every brand is for everybody and it's not a one size fits all. So we wanted to get in there as a group um, and see if we could reap some of those benefits Bob talked about. He talked about a couple slides ago about wanting better recognition. We wanted some better recognition in our association. We wanted to get the most out of our marketing and communications. We wanted to um, show that we were different and unique from other conservation organizations. We wanted to see if we could become more uniform and possibly share resources. That was the economies of scale that Bob talked about a little bit. All of that sounded like something we'd really like to have too. So, um, you know, could it be us? That was were the next few questions. And trying to answer that question, we came around with, of course, more questions. <laughs> you know, are we more different than alike, our association? So we're, you know, four different associations sitting in <coughs> lots. Some of us had uh, soil conservation as our target. Some of us have forestry as our target. You know, the lands are different, um, the, the people are different, the size of the populations are different. So could, could we be alike or will we be way more different? That was one of the questions. If we found out we're more different, then how can we still work together? So these were kind of troubling. You know, we really wanted to work together, but geez, what if we found out we couldn't? And then um, if we're different, how would we message? And then what if we're the same? How are we going to message? Because we still know there's some different so in beginning to answer those questions, um, there was a lot of self-discovery that Bob took us through. And it was a big, it was a process we, um, he, he helped facilitate the process. But for us, it, um, you know, lots of times we don't have a lot of resources as our CNDs. And for us, it worked really well. We were able to do it by teleconference. Um, and just find, you know, an hour out of, maybe every few months that we got together and, and went through this process. Um, when Do Bob talked about um, making the brand, I, that really resonated with us too because we knew we couldn't sell this to everybody. We knew we had to be able to sell what, what other conservationists were buying. So <coughs> in the process, we did the SWOT analysis, which is finding out our strengths our weaknesses, our opportunities, our threats. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with how that process works. But in doing that, there's always these aha moments. You know, whether, whether you're familiar with the process and I've done it a million times, it depends on what organization you're sitting there at the table with and you'll get some aha moments out of it. Um, we do have, we found that we had a lot in common, actually, which was exciting, um, between our values and our types of projects and our key stakeholder groups. So now, once we identified our key stakeholder groups, look, we don't have to go to every county fair. Let's figure out where these people meet and go to them. That was a good uh, point of discovery for us. Um, then we started to define more, um, what we came up with, our branding platform.
which is a key part of the entire product that I've helped us come up with. Um, and, and, and again, beyond the logo. Um, our brand ambition, so during this discovery phase, we asked ourselves, what is the fundamental reason that our brand exists? And thought about what is our higher purpose? So as our CMDs, people want a healthy environment and a healthy economy. How simple is that? But yet how profound? Everybody wants that. So there should be no arguing about how, how we get there. And we're all the same in wanting that. So that's our ambition. And then the brand mandate is a statement of what we must do to achieve our ambition. So in that regard, it's similar to mission statements. But what we came up collectively is that Wisconsin RC&Ds help create a better place to live and work through projects that are grounded in well-accepted principles of conservation while encouraging sustainable economic growth. The promise is the fundamental value proposition that we deliver to our stakeholders, and Bob talked a little bit about that too. The promise that we came up with working together was bringing people together and helping individuals to achieve better living in a healthy environment. Well, if we could do that, we'd really be doing something. And I think we're all striving toward that. So it's like those aha moments of thought, yes, that's where we, that's where we want to go. Um, and then our values are the principles by which we act and through which we can achieve our brand promise. So we feel like we're a knowledgeable resource. We all agree that we can, you know, that people come to us when they have questions about the environment or conservation projects. And we have other partners um, steering people toward us when they have questions that they can't answer. So we all agree, yeah, we know we're a knowledgeable resource. We're a flexible partner. We found out that we all work effectively with others, whether it's a you know, nonprofit group, whether it's a corporation, whether it's a government agency. We can work well with everybody. We agreed that we have balanced solutions. So we promote solutions that balance the need for a healthy environment along with being able to develop, it, develop a healthy economy. So we're not looking to, you know, pursue one over the other, we want that healthy balance. We found out we have local answers, and I think all of us realize that as our CMDs, that uh, being on the ground, on the landscape, is where the answers are found. Um, so we believe in the, the economic and resource conservation challenges we face in Wisconsin can be best addressed by people here on the ground uh, in Wisconsin, not down here in Minnesota. But. <laughs> And then that we are nonpartisan and nonpolitical, and this was important too. We didn't spend a lot of time on this because it's kind of a given. We're not going to be political. The solutions that we know we can come up with together are founded in consensus and understanding of science rather than through partisan political ideology. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a great question because as, as, as much as we'd like that, that's kind of one of the harder things because. And we've, you know, we've talked about that in Wisconsin. There, there seems to be a growing trend of polarization, politically and socially, and, and these issues that we deal with tend to fall into that. This is, I, I'm going to kind of interject my personal view on this. This is where I think our CNDs really have an opportunity, because though the country itself seems, seems to be drifting into these polarized camps, I personally believe there still are a heck of a lot of people out there that at the end of the day want to see solutions. They don't want to get locked into a rigid ideology and, and, and have a litmus test of your, of your ideology to make sure you're on their side. Yeah, there are those people, and there are the loud voices that are out there, but I think that, that there are quieter voices that want to get things done. They don't want to give up the environment for the sake of development, but they don't want to lock away the resources so that no one can ever touch them. They want to have solutions. And that's where I think the RCNDs really have that, that, that market opportunity to get there. And part of that is the local answer thing. Um, I, I think the more you rely on, on Washington or California to make your decisions for you, the more likely you're going to get locked into an ideological morass or, you know, that you're never going to be able to get out of. If you can keep people local to, to, who have a stake in it, they're usually much more amenable to the idea of 
yeah, okay, I can give a little here, and I can see you're giving a little there, and, and, and coming together. But you're, you're right. Fundamentally, that's a very tough thing to do. Mm -hmm. But I think our C and Ds are maybe as well positioned to get it done as anybody else is. If anybody can do it, I think it's our C and Ds. Good answer. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's a great question. I'm really glad you asked it. And I, I love Bob's answer, and I think it all uh, can be tied together. And if I go back to that grand ambition that I talked about at the beginning, people want a healthy environment and a healthy economy. We don't want to be arguing. And we can do that at the local level. So if you figure out what, what your ambition is, what your brand is, and then keep going back to that and stick to that. And your answer is going to be, I'm not going to argue with you. We want this, and we want this, and we can come together. <laughs> yeah, and you know, picking up on what Tracy mm -hmm. said with that, outsiders, as a rule, have less of a stake in getting a solution. Outsiders, they like their ideological purity, and, and they want to kind of stay there. But people on the ground in your communities, they want answers. They want to get things done. So I think that's where... Again, I, I, I'm still going to say it's hard. I, I recognize it's hard. But our C and Ds, in my mind, are as well positioned to, to, to take that on as anybody else. That's kind of your silent majority. <laughs> you know, I, I hate to use that term because it, it hardens. For those of us in the room who are old enough to remember that term being used in another context. But I think, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I, think, there's, I think there's a lot of truth to that. There's a, there, there is a lot of truth to that. This is an anchor. The perfect answer is we all work on the ground in our communities and know that that's how things get done the best way. So well, we wanted to sort of make it easier, all of this information we had and all of the promise and the ambition and all of that stuff, we wanted to make it a little bit easier. Um, so we're very excited to let you know we can all sum it up in three words. Conservation that works. This is our tagline. Um, it's a simpler way to express the principles that we talked about previously. It's memorable, it communicates the overall brand. We're excited about it. We've said a lot about who we are. We all believe in conservation, so we have the conservation part. Um, we believe in sustainability, that's the conservation part. But the word works in there shows that we're not preservationists or anti-development, that we wanna be on the landscape working to help build a better economy as well. And we uh, liked the tagline enough that we you know, gave it that little exclamation point at the end, but then we trademarked it. <laughs> so um, it's a trademark of the Wisconsin Association right now. And if it's something that your RCDs are interested in using, you can see us and we can talk about how yeah. to. Um, and the honest to God truth of that, I'll you. just you know, lay out the truth. We like that tagline. We think it works real well for what we, what we stand for. Um, it has that environmental tone to it, it has the works tone to it. We paid a little bit of money to, to get that thing trademarked. And then when we were coming to the national thing, well, what should we do with it? That if we literally asked that, we don't know. And, and so we didn't want to spend money on a lawyer to kind of like draw up agreements if no one else was interested in it. <laughs> so we said, well, we'll come in here. If people are interested in it, they can talk to us, and then we'll figure out a way to make that happen. 